These movies gave us an uncanny sense of deja vu. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for another top 10 copycat movies. For this list, we're looking at more twin films that share similar premises or plots and came out around the same time. A few of these even had the same endings, so beware, spoilers ahead. What? What do you want now? You want a medal? Number 10, Flight Plan and Red Eye. In both these high-altitude thrillers, a heroine on an overnight flight pits wits and fists against a criminal holding a loved one hostage. Yes, it should, because right now he's on his way to your hotel, and that's why you need to keep listening. No, no, I don't think, I, I don't have to do that. Yes, you do, if you want your dad to live. From this initial premise, the stories diverge in pretty different directions. Flight Plan focuses on a mother's search for her missing daughter, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we've got a first to report. Seems our aircraft is big enough to lose a child in. Whereas Red Eye follows a hotel manager's efforts to escape a terrorist and protect her father. So what do you do? Government overthrows flashy, high-profile assassinations, the usual. But both kick off with the death of a family member. Jodie Foster's character's husband in Flight Plan and Rachel McAdams' character's grandmother in Red Eye. And both also feature a villain who is not what he seems. I think you and I need to talk. Me too. Not in my house. <laughs> Number 9. Hercules and the Legend of Hercules Hercules has been around for eons, so you'd think we could space out our adaptations a little. But in 2014, Hollywood released two movies about the muscle-bound Greco-Roman hero. And while they strike different tones, with Hercules the more solemn of the two, both sword and sandal epics pare down the supernatural elements and portray a Hercules who has yet to discover his true power. But even this monster was no match for the son of Zeus. <laughs> Both also pit Hercules against a warmongering ruler and feature a scene in which he draws on superhuman strength to break free of chains. I am Hercules! Maybe writing a unique script should have been one of Hercules' 12 labors. Number 8 Chasing Liberty and First Daughter. Way to go! I can't! Believe you had that restaurant swarming with all of your secret servants. You ruined my date. In these romantic comedies, the president's teenage daughter rebels against overprotective secret service agents and falls for a man who's actually an undercover secret service agent. That's a pretty specific premise for two movies to share. Chasing Liberty has Mandy Moore's character run off skinny dipping and bungee jumping on a Euro trip. I want to swim naked in the Danube. Actually, it's the Blatava. While First Daughter follows Katie Holmes's goody two-shoes counterpart at college in California. It's hard enough to blend in having a team of secret servicemen carrying my books. Mm -hmm. But both share similar resolutions. When the girls discover the true identities of the leading men, get mad for a while, and, well, you can pretty much guess the rest. If I kiss you, do you think they'll shoot me? No. But I will if you don't. Number 7. The Raid and Dread Writer Alex Garland has sworn vehemently that Dread didn't borrow from The Raid. Even so, it's easy to see why film critics compared the two. Selamat pagi, teman-teman. Mungkin Anda sudah mendengar kalau kita kedatangan tamu tak diundang. This is mom. Somewhere in this block are two judges. Sure, The Raid is an Indonesian martial arts movie, whereas Dread is a British comic book adaptation set in a fascist future state. But The Raid is about law enforcement officers fighting their way up a high-rise floor-by-floor in pursuit of a drug lord. And Dread is about, well, law enforcement officers fighting their way up a high-rise to kill a drug lord. In both, said miscreant turns residents against the officers, including a rookie cop who rises to the occasion. Terus so how does she do? She a pass or a fail? 
Number 6. Canine and Turner and Hooch A detective partners up with a troublesome dog, and they bond after an initial clash of personalities. Hey, pup. Two. Well, I think your boy might have worked better. Okay, you know they're gonna work with me. Or they're gonna shoot us. Released just three months apart, these buddy cop action comedies share the same premise and some similar sequences, including the dog downing booze, seducing a lady friend, and some one sided shouting matches. Alright. That's the way you want. That's the way you're gonna have. What is it? What? What? The plots strike out in different directions, as Belushi's loose cannon detective pursues a drug bust with German Shepherd police dog Jerry Lee, and Tom Hanks' fastidious character tracks down the criminals who murdered Hooch's owner. But both climaxes feature classic taking the bullet moments, wherein canines earn their moniker of man's best friend. <laughs> Number 5. Tombstone and Wyatt Earp Originally, Kevin Cosner was attached to Tombstone, but left to make his own Wyatt Earp movie with Star Wars scribe Lawrence Kasdan. Howdy, stranger. What can I get you? I wouldn't mind one of those cigars. I'm about ready to go home. I wish y'all stopped yakking just quite Thank you. Kind of nice in here. That's my name. Well, it don't mean shit to me or anybody else in this world. And it never will after this night. His replacement, Kurt Russell, had no little hand in shaping Tombstone into a tight, action-packed western, while Cosner and Kasdan's film became a grandiose three-hour biopic focusing on the legendary lawman's life from childhood on. During production, their rivalry occasionally became bitter. Tombstone had monopolized period clothing, forcing Wyatt Earp to import costumes from Europe, while Cosner used his influence to limit Tombstone's distribution. <laughs> Nonetheless, Tombstone emerged from the dust triumphant, with critics and at the box office, thanks in part to Val Kilmer's scene-stealing performance as Doc Holliday. You must be Doc Holliday. <coughs> well, that's the rumor. Call me Doc. Number 4. Madagascar and the Wild A lion and his animal buddies escape New York's Central Park Zoo and travel by ship to Africa, where they struggle to adapt to the wild. This isn't so difficult. I'm the lion of the sea. Ah! This is the setup for both DreamWorks Madagascar and Disney's The Wild, made during the height of their rivalry. The catalyst in both computer animated fish out of water comedies is a zoo animal who longs to experience Mother Nature. Madagascar beat the wild to cinemas, and was a hit with both moviegoers and most critics. It may be a coincidence, but the wild focused on the relationship between father and cub and prominently featured an active volcano, all elements that would find their way into Madagascar 2. At least I saw the wild before it disappeared. I can still see it. It's right here. I found my roar. You deserve this, son. Welcome to the Pride. Number 3. Rough Night and Girls Trip Rough Night and Girls Trip start with similar setups. Some lifelong friends reunite to party it up, resulting in a journey of outrageous shenanigans and self-discovery. This is it. Your bachelorette weekend. I have been waiting for this moment since the first day of freshman year. Get in here. <laughs> you have? <laughs> Who's ready for a refill? <laughs> the main character of both is an ambitious public figure who falls out with her bestie. But Rough Night takes a sudden turn when the plus sized friend jumps on a stripper and accidentally kills him. Okay, my turn! Whoa, whoa, whoa. <gasps> oh, oh! He turns out to be a wanted criminal, so it's all okay. Or something. It's basically very bad things, but with great hair and no consequences. Help me, honey. You want to talk about us? You want to talk about us? Yeah, Leads right through you. Like that movie, Rough Night received mixed reviews, while Girls Trip was a success both critically and financially. 
Number 2. Despicable Me and Megamind DreamWorks' Megamind arrived right on the heels of Despicable Me, a similarly themed computer animated comedy also about a supervillain who becomes a good guy. Alright, put your hands in the air! Now hand over your wallets! And now he knows he could never part from those three little kittens that changed his heart. Admittedly, the villains in question take different paths towards their changes of heart. In Despicable Me, Gru's conscience is pricked by three orphan children. Megamind, on the other hand, swaps sides to rescue a love interest from a menace he himself has created. But both protagonists become supervillains after being misunderstood as children. That's when I learned a very hard lesson. Good receives all the praise and adulation while evil is sent to quiet time in the corner. Look, Mom, I made the prototype of the rocket out of macaroni. Eh. Both have a minion, or in Gru's case, minions, and both have to save loved ones from even worse villains. Before we unveil our number one pick that has us seeing double, here are some honorable mentions. Is he breathing? He's certainly not eating. Mumble, are you okay? Cody, Cody, how, how is he? Is he okay? Yeah, what what he's can I okay. do? I can help though, since that there's blood. I work like mad all day long and then dash down to the bar around midnight to end in the next day scenes. And Humphrey had, had, had just about moved into the hotel bar. Humphrey Bogart. Where he and John. John Houston. <laughs> and, uh, they drank every night. And I mean drank. Did you meet Humphrey Bogart? Meet? My dear, every night we had drinks and dinner and once, poker. You, you played poker with Humphrey Bogart? When it's all over, what will I be? You will always be the man who led us through this. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Olympus Has Fallen and White House Down Described as diehard in the White House, these action thrillers came out within mere months of each other. Both are about terrorists taking over the White House and a lone hero who saves the day. Sir, there's been an intrusion. Please stand up. Let's go. Move. Get please, please join us. That's not protocol, oh, sir. He's coming with us. Move. 24, I'm going to We got a maintenance. In Olympus Has Fallen, Mike Banning's a disgraced Secret Service agent who redeems himself when he rescues the president from North Korean terrorists. Sorry about the house, sir. In White House Down, John Cale is a police officer thought too reckless for the Secret Service, who proves his worth when a paramilitary group captures the president. I guess it would have been better if all the evidence would have been destroyed in the airstrike that you ordered. You say tomato, we say tomato. Both received mediocre reviews. But the lower budget Olympus Has Fallen reaped higher returns, and even managed to churn out a sequel. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.